everyone, and welcome to another call. So today we have Joe Petrosky with us, and we're going to talk about how to use your energy to achieve more than ever in 2023. But as always, let me introduce you a little bit about our speaker today. So Joe Petrosky is a psychic coach, master healer, and professional speaker. His path is his very own personal victory over certain death, which has led him to become an extraordinary healing facilitator and teacher. Being able to see your greatest gifts and talents, his intuitive abilities allow him to quickly identify and uproot the subconscious blocks that get in the way of you living your highest life. His mission to fully support you in your life by eliminating struggle and mediocrity. And this is because he believes that we can all live a life that feels great empowered, joyful, and filled with ease. Is there any doubt why I wanted him on the show today? Joe, welcome to the call and thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. I look forward to this. Thanks. So I always like to start off asking how, because I know in your bio it says you face a certain mm -hmm. death and all of this open. How did this happen? If you could share a little bit with us and what exactly does that mean? Because everybody's spiritual story or awakening is so different. Sure. And yet somehow we can sometimes relate to it. Sure. Well, uh, my childhood was really, really tough. Uh, loads of abuse, um, you know, both physical and verbal. And so I grew up learning how to hide. Um, I could hide in plain sight. And when I got into my you know, teens and 20s, it was still something I was very, very quiet and very, very shy. And in my late 20s, early 30s, I started to develop um, really severe allergies. I would get these horrific migraines from everyday things, soaps, perfumes, perfumes that I bought my wife at the time. Um, and, but the perfume, the headaches got so bad that, um, uh, and then there were so many side effects and then the, it became the perfumes and it was the laundry detergent. It was um, car exhaust, uh, dish soap, uh, hand lotions, mousse, toothpaste, and then it became foods. Um, and any food that I ate gave me horrific body pain, horrible body pain. And eventually what ended up happening is, is my body was turning in on itself and it saw everything that touched my skin, anything that I breathed and anything that I ate, it saw as an attacker. And so my body went to war on my food. It went to war on my breath. And so I became extremely ill. I was emaciated. I was about 80 pounds skinnier than I am now, if you can imagine that. And, uh, um, and one of the worst side effects is, is that when I would breathe everyday chemicals, um, I would lose the ability to tell you what I was seeing. I could see you, but there'd be no way that I would be able to say that you're a person and that you have a, you know, plants behind you. I wouldn't be able to tell you that. Wow. So, um, I could no longer read. I could no longer watch TV. Um, I was very, very, um, I, you know, made 80 year old people look fast <laughs> because I could, <laughs> um, and after working with me for six and a half years solid, the doctors knew that I had less than a year to live and I would probably end up taking my own life because the illness would get so bad. And it did, it got horrible. And, but luckily I had a friend, you know, that uh, on that day that was the worst and there was a shift in me and I came out and I was like, I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. And, but the doctors were extremely worried about my emotional status because quote unquote uh one of the doctors said i am very very uh worried and concerned about mr petrosky because he has this absolutely unrealistic expectation he's going to live <laughs> <laughs> just what you want to hear <laughs> yeah so it's like yeah so it's like okay you're crazy and you're not gonna live right. <laughs> um and so it was extraordinarily lonely, very, very frustrating. I didn't work for over three and a half years. I was on oxygen for almost two years and um, it was horrific. It was horrible. And luckily I kept trying, you name it, I tried it. NAAT, Bioset, um, Reiki, Qigong, acupuncture, shamanic healing. Um, I tried everything until I met this 35th generation Shaolin master. And I went to him and his students. And after the second hour, I was off the oxygen. And after the third hour, I was completely healthy. And he picked me out of a group of 150 people. And he said, you can do this too. And I'm like, um, 
I hope I stay healthy because you're nuts. <laughs> I mean, like, what do you mean I can do this? How, I mean, because to me, it was miraculous. Okay. I had, I had tried everything, every doctor, everybody, anything that they tried or told me, I tried. I gave it my all because I wanted to live and nothing worked. And then all of a sudden, poof, I'm better. And um, so I trained with him and I became, well, quickly became one of his best uh, assistant teachers, then one of his best teachers. And after three and a half years, he gave me the master's certification in Chinese energy healing. And also during that time, um, a friend of mine uh, that's Native American introduced me to an elder healer. And when I went there to a ceremony, the elder healer called me over, told my friend, he says, he says you go away. I'm going to sit with your friend. <laughs> and so, so we sat. And that began about four and a half or five years of sitting uh, with this Native he took me under his wing and he helped me see um, the energy and everything, the plants, the rocks, nice. people. It's when the people that had started to, uh, that had passed away started to show up. And so combining the way the Native American taught me and, um, and he says, I didn't teach you anything. We just sat, but it's like, okay, whatever. <laughs> I learned a ton. I learned a ton. Right. Um, sitting with him and then with what the Shaolin master had taught me. Um, I've developed my own techniques. I can, and I didn't know I had these psychic capabilities, but I can look at every single person and I can see your absolute greatest talents, what you like, the things you enjoy, how you learn, how you communicate. And then I can see the blocks that you have as well. And um, uh, so um, when I look at people, um, when they come to me with really, really serious and even permanent pains and illnesses, very often, and I tell people nothing Nothing is 100%, 100% of the time, but very, very often the techniques that I use can permanently eliminate the pain and the illnesses. Um, and very often it's one or two sessions. But right. I also, I enjoy the coaching aspect because, um, so I've had too many dear, near death experiences. Um, and literally I've had so many that the cats run from me because they're afraid I'm gonna steal their lives. <laughs> these nine are mine <laughs> exactly yes exactly yeah they're like here he comes <laughs> um but i've had so many near-death experiences that um and when i've come out of them uh after the last one literally for four days i had a nightmare anytime i fell asleep um and uh in that time up period i was actually in the hospital for four days actually i was in the hospital for 21 i had uh two emergency surgeries and uh two more surgeries and for four days, I had this nightmare and every single time I fell asleep, whether it was for, you know, 20 minutes or two hours, um, it asked me, do you accept yourself? And, mm -hmm. I like, and I was like, well, yeah, I accept myself. It's like, really? And then it showed me every mistake that I held guilt and shame about still, even though I've remedied them, even though I've made amends to the people, it showed me every single time, every single thing I screwed up with business mistakes, losing $18,000, you know, um, an investment, um, you know, uh, my ex-wife, you know, different relationships, um, anything that I'd ever, ever done wrong, it showed me and it said, do you still accept yourself? And, and it came down the very last day. It took me four times to sleep through this one and um, said, OK, cool. Here you are, a bump on a bed. You can't help anybody. You, um, uh, you, don't, you can't make any money. You're going to be out of work for a long time. Um, do you still accept yourself? And it took four times of going to sleep, but it's like, yeah, you know what? If they drop me off on a, a desert island right now, um, I do accept myself um, for the fact that I'm here. And everything about me and my company, profoundly living. Well, first I'll tell people wonder, it's like, what's the deal with his arms in the air? Well, my daughter did not know me healthy until she was five and a half years old. Um, her, her entire life, daddy's sick, daddy's sicker, and daddy's, daddy's dying. My daughter knew that I you know, was dying. And so when I was able to, um, after the second session, of the, after, um, if I was able to go into the library or Whole Foods or Target, and I didn't need oxygen, my daughter would throw her arms up, daddy, daddy, no oxygen, no oxygen. And so... I had that as a reminder of how lucky I am. Right. But then after it got old, because that's been, you know, over 21 years now, um, I looked at it and it's like, if we can't toss our arms up in the air and say, you know what, I'm living a terrific life. I'm living a great life. I'm happy with my life. I think we're missing it. Right. 
we didn't we didn't come down here to make money work for 65 years and then die you know that's not why we were born and so my company is called profoundly living okay and so my idea is that we're all born miracles we're all born amazing people and so if we can't every so often just say you know what i love me and i love my life if we can't do that every so often i think we're missing out mm -hmm. and so profoundly living and then being your magnificent self. Nice. And so people call me the soul connector because I can see who you are. I can see your greatest talent and I can see some of the things, the incredible gifts that you were born with. And so as I help you connect to those things, you actually feel like you're connected to your purpose in the reason why you were born. For mm -hmm. some, some people, it's the very first time they really feel this is why I was born. This is why everything starts to make sense. Mm -hmm. And so I love the coaching. I absolutely love to be able to see people, um, you know, and I usually work with very, very accomplished professionals, um, you know, and very intelligent people. And so when they come out and all of a sudden they start to feel this ease and they felt, start to feel this joy and they no longer feel like everything is, you know, dread or blah, 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 or, right. you, know, you know, so that's what I like. That's what I, you know, that's why I do what I do. Right. And the beautiful thing is like, I'm thinking of several things as, as you're talking for one, it's my way of, that I can explain it. I don't remember what happened, but many, many, many years ago, I think I did a meditation. I had on a hall or I got to a next level of like a week. I don't know. It was something, but I could see the colors mm -hmm. way brighter. It was like somebody had umped the pigment in the grass and the trees and the birds and the sky it was an amazing thing. And that's where I started to notice how, okay, in, in different terms, how this reality, mm -hmm. we see it again by our thinking, by our issues, by our limitations, by all these things that we don't accept ourselves, just like that question that was being formed to you. But when you actually wake up to your true self and you connect mm -hmm. to who you really are, I am proof because I remember it happened to me and it's, it lasted like a week that I was mm -hmm. like in shock of how bright and colorful and I could smell the smells and I could feel, and then you start getting in your brain again. It's such a, so my question to you is, so we're going to, we're talking today about how to become your magnificent self and really achieve the things that you want to do in 2023. Sure. Mm -hmm. How can somebody actually Besides contacting you and working with you, which obviously you're on the show for a reason, and at the end we'll get you get them your information. But for people around the world that maybe they want this for themselves, but they don't believe it's possible. Sure. Mm -hmm. What practical advice or what can you suggest that they try to do? Because we all deserve to feel mm -hmm. that way. Yeah. Well, one of the things is, is that when, you know, when we're born, we are born these to be these amazing people. And then what ends up happening is we're told, sit down, shut up and behave. And, right. you know, in a variety of ways. And so we, um, for very many, many years, we're told to sit down, put your hands on your lap, you know, pay attention to the teacher. Who cares what you think? Just get, get an A on the test. That's all we care about. Um, and so what I ask people to do is really, really get in touch with themselves. And so there's a few simple, um, I call them power movements. And so if people want to, they can send me an email and ask for the power movements. Okay. And so these things are so simple and they're just a teeny, they're like, you know, number, you know, 1% of what I do, but mm -hmm. they're incredibly powerful. And this first one that I'm going to describe every single athlete since 2008 that I've been doing this and every person, but the athletes, more importantly, we will test them. We'll put down money. They'll win the money in the competition. And then I'll show them this one set of movements. Every single athlete, every single one since 2008 has been able to outdo what they just did to win the cash by doing this one set of movements. And so if it's that powerful for an athlete, just think what it can do for you. Right. And so <clears throat> it's very, very simple. You simply just roll your shoulders back just a little bit gently, and then you tilt your chin 10 degrees. And the reason that with that is the whole thing about keep your chin up. There was a psychologist in about 1910 in London that found out that if you do keep your chin up, the chemicals in your brain change and it's almost impossible to be depressed. So that's the whole thing about keep, keep your chin up. So shoulders back, chin up, and then simultaneously do a Kegel, Kegel, wherever you are. And basically what that is, is it's squeezing to stop the urine flow. 
-hmm. then squeeze your butt muscles as hard as you can. So do the Kegel and the glutes and a okay. glute squeeze. And so when you're doing that and you're standing, it's best when you, to learn it when you're standing. And you, when you hold that, what ends up happening is you can feel the energy raising, like, you know, putting a stopper in the tub and the energy starts to rise and rise and rise through your body. And so the more you practice it, the more energized you're going to be and the more in connection. And I had taught this to the Nova Southeastern University women's volleyball team. And um, uh, they coined it the Google movement. And, <laughs> um, because when they did this, they got them so much more in connection with their own, own intuition. And they had a feeling of, of more assuredness that they were doing the right thing. And it does get you, it truly gets you uh, more in connection with your intuition, mm -hmm. better hand-eye coordination. It increases your physical, emotional, and spiritual strength. And mm -hmm. uh, so, but since I'm a, not a doctor, I can't say any of that. I didn't say right. that. Right. <laughs> it's just so, hearsay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but, um, oh. and so when you do this and you're standing up, what you do then, you do all that. And you release, you take a step back and you take a step forward. And um, the women's volleyball team, they did it before every single serve and their season started to improve greatly. The football players that I originally taught it to, they would do it between uh, in front of every single snap. And, and it was amazing to see these people turn around and they were able to lift more weights. They're able to run faster. Um, they were able to run their routes better. All of these wonderful things. And so for average regular people, you know, I look at it, it's like, they say, how long should I do it? And how often should I do it? And it was funny because again, the Nova Southeastern is like, there's like, well, you want a good ass, don't you? Because <laughs> the more you squeeze the glute muscles, you know, you're going right. to be, um, right. but it's, it's something that as you practice it, you're going to feel that energy rise up. And um, it's one of those things where, so to, hmm. be your, to be your magnificent self, you have to be in connection with yourself. Yes. And it's like, how the hell do I be in connection with myself? What does that mean? If you do this, you're going to feel that connection to yourself. You're going to feel how that comes into your body. And it's so strong and it's so amazing. And there's other movements that, you know, well, again, if people tell me about or send me the email, I'll send it out to them. And one of them, uh, you know, we have the, the chakras, okay? For those that don't know it, basically it's energy centers and it's the way um, the Indians from India, how they see the energy system. The, mm -hmm. Chinese see the, the Chinese see the acupuncture meridians. Well, we have these power centers inside of our body. And the very first is um, all about safety and security. Okay, how are we supposed to start to formulate anything unless I feel okay, unless I feel safe? I have to be able to feel simply that I'm okay and that I have a right to something because so many of us have been told, who are you to think you deserve that? You know, what, what why are you so special? Right. You're going to, you're going to take that time for yourself. Really? You know, there's things that need to be done. And so we have to be able to come into ourselves. We have to be able to take that step in. And so one of it is simply putting the hand over the first and second, which is basically putting your hand on your lap and the other, put the other hand over your heart. And it doesn't matter which one goes over which. And you'll see if you do this enough that you'll eventually you'll, you'll change hand positions. And um, when you do that, what happens is it starts to make the energy flow in a circular motion. Because when we do not feel safe and sec secure, we're on the lookout the whole time. And right. this is something that they can document with tests and everything like that, that our, our energy system, our hormones, our nervous system all becomes linear to basically, I got to solve the situation. I got to be in protection. We want to be in growth, which is basically, you know, give and take, give and take, give and take. And so when we can do that with holding that person second and holding that heart, um, it's amazing what ends up happening. And I then, love the way, sorry, <laughs> let, let me say this real quick, because I love the way we're talking. I know you and I had talked about before and obviously the pre-calls. Several things. I love the way that you describe the things because you talk to them, you talk about them in a logical sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that first movement that you're talking about chin up i did not know about the chin and and the chemicals so that was interesting sure. but as you were describing the exercise one of my teachers long ago had me do a very similar exercise so what i love is that we get to talk about it from a mindset logical mm -hmm. everyday world Mm -hmm. But we can talk about it in a spirituality world as well, because it's the Kundalini energy that we're actually, it, so when you said the chakras at the second one, I'm like, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Yeah. It was, and it was very similar. It was um, 
Well, you said it very eloquently. I'll say it in my words. So yes, you hold down, like if you're holding down your bladder so you don't go to the bathroom and you squeeze, but then the difference for me wasn't exactly put my chin up, although I happen to end up doing it because what I do is that I put my tongue on the roof of my palate. Sure. Mm -hmm. And unconsciously, I raise my chin. So when you said that as well, I'm like, Huh. Okay. Yeah, it, exactly. And, you know, when I started doing these movements, it was back in um, probably about 2002. And at that point, I didn't know anything about the Kundalini yoga. But yeah, right. in, in Kundalini yoga, when you simply do the root, uh, when you do the Kegel and the glute squeeze, uh, they call it the root lock. And so I've added a couple of things where tilting the chin, um, Mm -hmm. rolling the shoulders and then stepping back because the stepping back part, I find locks it physically with inside the body. So when you step back and then you step forward and that's the part, because when you do simply the the root lock, when you do the root locks, like, okay, cool. And then it will, it will go with you a little bit, Uh but it's, it's not going to come in there. And because when you, if you do it, the way that I talk about, and you practice this regularly, your system is going to change and your connection to your intuition is going to be much stronger. And it's something where I have talked with people that do the Kundalini and um, the one fellow that was talking, he says, you're involving the physical knowing. And Mm -hmm. um, and he says, we're doing the spiritual knowing and the spiritual Mm -hmm. connection, the spiritual connection to the intuition. And he says, you're involving the physical connection Mm -hmm. to the intuition. So that, you know, but Either way, who cares? Both of them work. Right. <laughs> and no, and that's the yeah. thing. And, and and that's exactly why I love talking to different people. And because I can be doing the same thing in different words and different ways. And we could all help each other, which the whole point of this show is to spread our information and our knowledge for other people. Because what he just said, it's the physical movement. I would call that embodiment. And yeah, mm-hmm. completely. Like you would embody and train the muscles and train your actual cells into this process that way we're actually anchoring it in way Mm -hmm. deeper than the spiritual because okay from a spiritual perspective one problem for a lack of better word right now one problem that i see many people have is they're either not spiritual at all or they're all spiritual oh god yeah Mm -hmm. and they forget that we're living in a human body you oh, yeah. need to do things with the physical human body. So it's like you need to bring that spirituality into your form, into mm-hmm. your body, and then train the body because it's a beautiful kick-ass machine because it really is. It oh. really, really mm-hmm. is. And with the practice and the things that you do, you're actually, not subtly, but you're you're mixing everything in, which is why I can totally see why people get the reactions and the you know, mm-hmm. outcomes that they get with you because you're literally working from different aspects. The thing is that I'm picking at them because I notice what you're doing. I'm like, oh, I like cool, that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, you know, the the whole thing that you talk about, about being spiritual people and things like that. Last night I went to an event and um, it was a fundraiser and there was some alcohol involved, food involved, music involved, dancing, you know, the whole thing like that. And there was a woman that I know, uh, it's nice yeah. to meet you. It's nice to see you again. You know, and I'm like, and you know, I says, yeah. I says, come on outside. Oh, I'm having my back against the wall because when I have my back against the wall, I'm more in tune with me, and I'm not affected by everything that's going on around me. Oh, like, oh, oh, so you're not having a good time, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's the thing. It's it's we can't do that. We can't oh do God. that because we have we're here to live. That, you know, um, I'm, when I've talked to people like that, you know, uh, because so many of the yogis and, you know, and especially the ones that, you know, uh, dress in all white, you know, there's mm-hmm. so many things they can't do. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, right. hold on a second. You spend all this time and all this energy connecting to source and feeling these experiences and, and learning stuff and getting downloads so you can go home and be safe. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's like, come on. You know, it's, um, you know, it's something where I look and it's one of those things where, you know, you can have a candle that's huge and the wick is, it, it's amazing and it's bright, but if you keep it in your living room, you know, it's never going to shine on anybody else. Yeah. And, you know, and this is the part where certainly we get to have good boundaries, decent boundaries. We have to take care of ourselves. That's the first and foremost about everything. 
but it's like, if we do the things, you know, the power positions, people can send them, you know, and I'll set it up. If you do these and you practice these regularly, you will feel so much more physically secure, emotionally secure and spiritually connected. And if you can feel all that, you mm -hmm. know, this is the part where, you know, when I work with people, what ends up happening, I call my program wisdom, wellness, and wealth. Because at the end, every single client since 2012, when I began coaching, every single one has had financial gains, financial wins, incredible deals on houses, cars, you know, uh, career promotions, because of the fact that they connected to their individual spirit, they're in yes. their highest connection, their highest vibration. So the universe says, shine on, you know, yes. and so that's the part where people think, you know, this is a part right, right now, it's more important than anything anything else to be so self-concerned and so self-aware not selfish but right. it's like we have to be able to serve us what is it that i need and so you were talking how do we help people be their most magnificent self mm -hmm. okay it's interesting because every client that i've worked with this morning you know so far every single one was basically having the same i don't know how to dream I don't know how to visualize. And it's like, because if people have been, you know, abused a lot, if they've been shamed a lot, if they've lived in bad circumstances, dreaming was dumb. Sometimes it was, it was the worst thing they could do. They would be made fun of. They would get their hopes up. They would get beat. They would get yelled at. Right. You know, who, who do you think you are to deserve this? Right. All, all of that kind of junk. And so what I do is I ask, it's like, okay, if you had a wish, if you had a wish, what would you wish for? And I ask people, it's like, if I had a wish, what would my, and as soon as you say, what would my, your subconscious is going to answer. If I had a wish, if I had a wish, what would I, you don't even have to say what would I wish, but finish it off. What would I wish? And you're going to feel the answer on that. It's like, if I, and one of the things that I tell people so, 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 so often, what are your needs? What are your needs? What are your wants? Because we yeah. have you know, if we don't put the oxygen mask on ourselves first, we're not going to be able to serve anybody else, you know? And I just, I fired a client because, you know, I mean, it was, it was one of the saddest things that I did, but she wasn't taking care of herself. She was letting her angry husband run roughshod and, you know, she's got a baby in the mix. And I was just like, I can't do this if you're not going to take care of yourself. And so it's like, if I had a need and I asked her, I said, if you had a need, what would your need be? And she started crying. I said, okay, cool. It's great that you're crying because your, your whole system is telling you that there's something there. Okay. There's something. And so I says, if you had a need, she says, if I had a need, I just want to be, I want to be seen and I want to be listened to, you know, if you had a, you know, a desire, what would it be? A desire would be to, to again, it was to be seen and have fun right. because she's, she's walking around her own house in fear, mm -hmm. you know? And so um, I tell people, it's like, okay, if I had a wish, so you're sitting there with all the new year's resolutions and all that. Okay, great. They're there. You got them down. Cool. Okay. Keep them now go deeper. If I had a wish and what I ask people to do is go physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially, career, and, you know, in relationships, if I had a wish in my relationships, what would my wish be for my relationships? And so if you think if I have a wish for my nice. relationship, you know, and so some people's like, you know, there was somebody that are, a couple that I worked with last night. And so I asked her, I says, if you had a wish, if I had a wish, it would be that we talk more. And uh, because they're, they're a great couple. They play music together. They teach, you know, uh, music and all this other kind of stuff. And they travel around and, and everything like that. And, you know, they have a great sex life but they have, there's no connection, you know, they rock the sheets, they come out all sweaty, but they don't have the connection. Question. Mm -hmm. We're kind of going off subject, but that <laughs> triggered my mind. Hold on, hold on. How can they have a great sexual relationship and be connected in the sheets or wherever they want to be connected, but not communicate? Um, so that usually comes with a real big level of intimacy and a lot of intimacy is communication well it's kind of one of those things where for example you know they can go out and this guy can play the guitar like santana you know and you know um all these other people i mean he can just rock the house i mean just you just watch him and it's like whoa you know okay. um you know and when she sings i mean she sings like crazy okay but when they get together and they try and talk you know 
it's just not so. And so what it is, is um, they have this real, you know, because the second chakra is all about sexual. The second chakra is sexuality, creativity, and hormones. Okay. And so the second chakra, they're creative as hell. They got, ah. the, creative, they got the creative juices going so they can come in there, you know, and they, both of them look good too, you know. Um, Which helps. And, Yes. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, the guy, go, he, the guy is one of those things where when he walks through the women are just like, <laughs> you know, and uh, she's very, very attractive too. But, you know, he's just one of those anomalies, you know, that just, you know, it's like, okay, thanks a lot, God. <laughs> hey, I like those anomalies. I can't say anything. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's one of those things where, um, you know, she asked him, I understand that it's hot, but could you please, even in the summer, could you please put a shirt on when you play? because he would during some of the concerts he'd take his shirt off and it's like i mean the guy's ripped <laughs> you know so here he is you know playing this music you know which is orgasmic to begin with then he's got that body and he's got the beard and the hair and everything like that you know and so the women are all of them but so the but the intimacy this is the part where when people get this part everything shifts yeah everything shifts okay and so when you do the intimacy in sex what you have to be willing to do is realize you 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 right here are my gift from god okay mm -hmm. and then you are also my responsibility from god okay so god gave you to me okay and, and i'm giving you everything god wants to love you and god's you know not here in the physical form so i'm i'm gonna make the decision that when i touch you when I breathe with you, that when I anything with you, that I'm doing it because I'm trying to tell you how much I love you and then allow myself, if creator was here, how much would creator, what would creator do? And when you take that energy in, I mean, oh my God, you know, it's, it's so much deeper. But when you do that, um, I tell people, it's like, okay, you think you got a great sex life and everything like that. Okay. Do eye gazing. Okay. And so look at each other in the eyes, just eye to eye, mm -hmm. real close, you know, so I'm about 12 inch, 16 inches from the screen, you know, so be that close to your partner and look in each other's eyes and try and do it without a smile. Right. And when people do the eye gazing, it's going to open up your soul really deeply. Mm -hmm. And, but most people can't do that. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, go to dinner. You don't talk about the kids. You don't talk about the work. You don't talk about politics. You don't talk about prices, you know, and you just look at each other and it's like, why do I want to be here with you? And that's one of the things where people miss out, you know, um, because, you know, it's like, oh God, you know, my friend, and I mean, so I work with a lot of, you know, it's executives on up, you know, typically, I mean, I work with, I'll work with anybody that wants to, they have to have a desire. Um, if they don't have a desire, I don't care who they are. Um, you know, I'm not going to work with them. And, but, you know, I see these people and literally there's this guy and I was like, what the hell's going on? This is the last two weeks. I says, you've been screwed. I says the last two weeks. I says, there's nothing that's really working inside your body. And I said, you're feeling, I, I'm looking at him, I'm in coaching him in, individually. I says, you're all about lack. And I says, you are so twisted right now. You can't see forward. There's, you know, there's no forward energy. There's no, I have this, I got this. I'm connected to creator. I says, what the hell happened? <sighs> you know, and uh, a friend of his bought a jet that he can't afford. And I was <laughs> like, okay, dude, you know, <laughs> you have a, you know, you have your own jet, you know, that seats eight people uh besides the captain and the co-captain i'm like you know and but he went immediately he went into lack and he went into judgment and and i love that you said that because i want people to understand especially that we're talking in this episode about how to create a great 2023 mm -hmm. maybe somebody needs to buy a transportation let's call it a car and they're here this no matter if the person got bummed because friend bought a jet and he couldn't buy the same jet we all what am I trying to say is at any level that we're at we all try to compare ourselves mm -hmm. and uh, sadly our mind runs with but I can't have that and mm -hmm. we forget to see everything we do have mm -hmm. and from my experience and you just said it 
that drains your energy because now you're starting to believe in lack and you're starting to feel lack. And yet all these great and wonderful things are around you and our mind is focused on all these things. So for 2023, I think one of the great things that we can say here precisely is that look at everything that we have because that fills your creativity, your vitality, your energy, your you, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Oh, totally. You know, um, because, you know, it's, it's every, you know, there's all the comparison, um, you know, they have this, I wish I had this, I don't, you know, that kind of stuff. And it's like, okay, you know, whatever, but it's like, you know, and this is the thing where when I was in the hospital, you know, I couldn't do a damn thing. They told me I wasn't going to be able to, you know, the prognosis, they were surprised I lived. Okay. Um, once again, <laughs> damn you, <laughs> yeah, damn exactly. you, you treated us wrong. <laughs> and, uh, so, um, there was, I knew I wasn't going to be able to work for like six months, you know, and, um, uh, how do I accept myself in that position? And so I see these people and, you know, they have quote unquote everything, or even if they don't, you know, um, last night I took a couple on, you know, that's completely pro bono, you know, um, struggling couple, you know, in their twenties and, uh, sweet, sweet, wonderful people. And I looked at the guy and I'm like, okay, so you don't have all this stuff. Okay. I said, you have an incredible body. I said, you work out. And I said, you, your body gives you a ton of joy. You love running. I said, you love running. You love, love playing beach volleyball. And I said, and you love swimming. I said, so your body is, your body literally is your temple, but it's also your play toy. And it's really there for you. It's doing wonderful. And I says, on top of that, I says, anything that you sit down to learn, you can really, really learn. I said, so your brain is doing really, really well for you too. So you've got a lot that's going on for you. And he's like, well, yeah, but every, you know, and so he was like, everybody has that. I'm like, no, everybody, mm. everybody doesn't. And who cares? I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, um, if we all had ice cream cones, it's just like somebody else's, I mean, you know, we have to be able to, we have to be able to stop and say, thank you, no matter what. Yeah. Um, because, and this is stuff where they've done tests on it, noetic sciences, the ion center, heartmat.org, Greg Braden, all these different right. people have done, they've done tests on stuff like this, where if you have a certain idea in you, and then you eat this wonderful organic food and everything like that, that's prepared terrifically. If you have this crazy thought or this negative thought, this hateful thought, your body sees that food no differently than something that's non-organic, that's filled with glycogen you know, glycophosphates and, and, you know, Monsanto and all that shit. Right. You're, so you're taking this expensive, wonderful organic food and you're, and all of a sudden it's, it's junk, it's, it's junk food now. Yeah. It's like, well, hold on a second. The, or, the labels are all organic, but the thoughts made it junk food. And this is the hardest thing. And I tell people, it's like, okay, give yourself a freaking break. Okay. We, the, first of all, creator, God, source, however you want to call it made our neuroreceptors so we remember the bad shit a whole lot more than remember the positive stuff okay and when we remember you know the bad stuff it comes in there strong and it comes but when we sit there and we try and remember the good stuff you know we literally we literally have to search and search and search for the good stuff and this is why you know people talk about you know, how do I achieve and all these different things. It's like, yeah, we have to raise the vibration. This is something every single one of the people in the secret realized, oh, you know, we really goofed. We really goofed. We didn't tell people they had to have emotions behind their thoughts. Right. You know, because you can have your thoughts and you can put it out on paper and everything like that. But unless you have the vibration, unless you can get your vibration to match what it feels like to have that beautiful house with that beautiful backyard, you know, um, unless you can match your vibration to that, you'll never manifest it right. unless you can manifest, unless you can match your vibration to that really loving, caring, admiring, you know, loving partner, you'll never have it. Right. So, um, and so what we do is we get to basically say, if I could desire, if I could wish for a partner, if I could wish for a partner, because people, they've only dated dogs or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, but if, if I could wish, if I had a desire, if we take those kinds of things, like if I had a desire for a a partner, what would that desire be? You know? And it's very, very often, very, very interesting, you know, because they think, oh, I want this, I want this, I want this. But it's like, if you, if you ask, if I have a desire about a partner, you know, my first thing is, is I want somebody I can cuddle up with. 
you know, and that's my favorite thing about having a partner. Yeah. This, you know, the sex and everything like that, I want to have that great, but it's those times in the couch. It's those times in the hammock. It's those times on the beach where you're just chilling. You're not doing a damn thing. You're not thinking you're not planning. Right. You know, so if you, if, if you go to those kinds of vibes, it's amazing what happens. You know? And I just, and I just wrote it down. Cause I realized when you're asking people, what is your desire? I didn't catch it the first time, but now I caught it. They're responding with the feeling mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the feeling is what creates the vibration, which creates the attraction, which, blah, blah, blah. but when you're asking them, what do you desire? Their feeling is the one that's replying because when we tell somebody, what do you want? We jump into, I need to respond. So it's logical thinking. We go into the brain and we logically say the things but mm -hmm. when you talk about desire, it hijacks the mind and goes right into the emotion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And, um, and that's, you know, we, we need to look at the fuel, you know, right. um, and um, because it's, a, it's also one of those things where when you think about it, um, uh, you can have any kind of food, but if you, if you think about going to your favorite restaurant, you know, you think about going to your favorite restaurant and I'm back in Minnesota and I'm going to my Vietnamese restaurant and I can smell the smells and everything. Oh God. And you know, damn well, it's going to, it's going to taste great, you know, but I've gone there where I'm in a hurry and you know, everything is going bad. I went there, <laughs> I went there right before my divorce hearing, you know, and everything like that. And I was like, the food didn't taste very good. <laughs> you know, Because you're up in here and everywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's great. And I know we're running out of time, but I really want people to reach out to you because, again, one of the reasons I want to have you on the show is so that we can talk to people and we could show them and explain to them. But I really want them to reach out and especially to them for them to send you an email for the power movements, because all those little things are shifts that they can mm -hmm. do mm -hmm. for their oh. 2023. And my biggest thing is. Like, I don't, like you said a while ago, I don't work with somebody either who doesn't want the change because mm -hmm. we can be purple and blue and pink in the face trying to teach them and help them. But if they don't want the help, there's nothing can be done. Mm -hmm. But for the people that do want to do something, just learning how to connect with their own body, with the tools, with the techniques, the way that you probably have it broken down, they get to feel the change and then they get to see the change in their lives. Mm -hmm. And that's what this whole thing is about for people to realize you can live happier and filled with joy and removing obstacles and removing limitations. So I will put your email down in the comments, but where else can they visit you to get more information? Well, um, the info at profoundly living is, is the best way. And I used to give out my phone number, but uh, that's not a good thing <laughs> to do, um, you know, um, things. Um, but I always off, um, uh, I should, I don't know. Did I send you the Calendly link? I might not have done that. Um, no, can, send that to me and I'll put it in the description. Okay. And so with the Calendly link, basically, um, I offer people, you know, 30 minutes, you know, we sit down and talk 20, 30, 45 minutes, whatever. I want them to be able to ask all the questions that they desire because most people don't know that this level of healing is possible right. that you can truly eliminate stuff so they can call me up and they can ask and then also if they want to send information you know or send to the email and um in the next three weeks i'm going to be doing a couple of different things with other people that are going to be free seminars free webinars where we talk about these kinds of stuff and people will be grilling me about stuff and i'll be answering the questions and so it'll okay. definitely it'll definitely help people because okay. it's gonna it's gonna be people that have the same kinds of questions and uh so that's gonna be fun okay yeah. awesome so as always, I'm going to put everything down below. Joe, thank you so much for today. And mm -hmm. I am going to pick your brain right after I stop recording. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And, you know, and everybody out there, you get to understand that you truly, truly do matter. You do matter. You make a difference. And um, I hope you can see that. And I hope you can feel that. Nice. Bye, everyone. Thank you.